what was, do you think, one of the more interesting projects you had? Was, was that the bat, perhaps? I mean, was that what was well, the bat wasn't a project here at the museum, although I have drawn bats um, for the museum, you know, fossil bats. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a color cover for the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology. Um, and that was a, a, a large bat, a fossil bat. When um, you say large, are we talking like this bird here a minute ago? Kind of um, wingspan? Well, pretty big. Kind of well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to commit myself to that. but. Well, I have a picture of it. I'll show. I can show you oh, later. Right. It was a big bat. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the the bat, the bat that I uh, raised came about sort of incidentally, and because I was working on a children's book uh, about a young bat, um, one of my colleagues, one of the scientists here, and I decided that we would collaborate on a children's book. And we made up our minds we were going to. Do it. <laughs> so she wrote the story, and I started in on a series of drawings. And I had been asking around for, you know, bats, uh, bat in a jar, a skeleton of a bat, all that stuff is here. So people knew that I had an interest in bats at the time. And uh, one day, uh, some people brought a, a baby bat here, and they sent them to me because they thought, oh, Bonnie likes bats. <laughs> and I'll tell you, at first I thought it was a baby bird. It was young enough that had uh, no no hair on it except no for beak. No, it didn't have a beak. It had a muzzle, a soft brown muzzle, dark brown, and it had brown wings and brown ears. But it it didn't look like a bat because it had pink skin, you know. And so when I realized it what it was and how young it was, I thought uh, maybe I'd better take it because they didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, of course I didn't either. I had no idea. <laughs> but 17 so, years later? Yeah, I took it home and I called Bat Conservation International and got in, put in touch with somebody who knew a lot about brown bats. And like you say, for 17 years I had this little girl. <laughs> yeah. Her name was Bibi. I kept a journal for her and I learned all kinds of things about that. So mm. It's a wonderful experience. That's good. That's just a, sort of an offshoot of yeah, the, And then the book got published too. So. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a nice a little aside story there. Mm -hmm. um, now, typically when you work, um, is, is there anything special you want to describe in your technique? or? Uh, well, I do a lot of my work now at the computer. I'm there most of the day. But I also do a fair amount uh, of traditional drawing, like uh, like we showed you here. And I do that when I have some very intricate, very sensitive materials to describe. Um, I have to be able, with a magnifying glass, to get in there and, and look, you know, examine it very closely. And uh, also to see the whole drawing at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense. If I were to try to do it on the computer, in order to get up real close, I have to enlarge it. And once I do that, I lose sight of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And what's important in something like this is uh, when you're finished, you want the, the, uh, the values, the darks and the lights. You want all parts of the picture to harmonize, mm -hmm. basically. When I first started working here, <laughs> I didn't do that so well. Something would be too dark over here and right. too light here and it looks funny on the printed page there. But that and that's what you mean by harmonize. You want yes. your darks to be in the same range through yeah. all views. Yes. I want a nice range of values from maybe almost eighty percent down to maybe well, pure white probably. Up to about eighty percent. Maybe you can't get a hundred percent black usually. But then when I scan them, uh, then I can spread the range of values the way I want. You can do an awful yeah. lot of manipulation in Photoshop. So, right. you know, after I finish a drawing like this, I'll scan it and then, you know, further work on it in Photoshop. If I have to make corrections later on, I will usually do that in Photoshop because mm -hmm. I don't want to have to rescan it. Right. Um, 
and then I'll take it into Illustrator and uh, you know put labels on it, and figure out if, uh, which parts of the specimen are broken and fill those in in a certain way. Mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of little details. Oh, no, and, and actually part of the job is assigned to Illustrator. If you're looking at a like a jawbone mm -hmm. or this whale and chunks that are missing, part of your job is to fill that in and make it look real. Yeah, sometimes they want sometimes they want it to look just like it looks from the field. In which case my job is to figure out is this a broken surface or is this a natural surface? Or is this something that's just been displaced and it actually it's not missing, it's like over here mm. <laughs> on top of the where the eye is supposed to be or something. Mm. A lot of that happens. And then there are times when they want it reconstructed to look uh, like it would if it were, you know, a, a perfect animal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They want to show what it really, what they think it looked like, not what the broken, uh, the broken bones look like. Right. So, and sometimes it's part way in between. But it's all, that area is a little vague. I have to make real sure that I know where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and when you when you are drawing, you're not using a standard number two pencil, are you? Or do you uh, uh, no, I use don't a, usually. More of a charcoal pencil. I'll thing? show you. I have, well, I use a kind of crazy number of pencils here. This is pretty much what I use. I don't know if you can see what I'm when I'm drawing. I usually have this little dish of carbon dust out. I use a lot of paint brushes uh, to apply the carbon dust. I usually start by doing that, by brushing in some values. And then I just work tighter and tighter and tighter, very, very gradually. Mm -hmm. Pick away at it. You mean when you say tighter and tighter, you mean adding more detail. Yeah, just 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 uh, sort of closing in on exactly what's there, making sure the lines are crisp, that the values are perfect, that everything I'm molding or modeling looks, you know, dimensional, right. like I want it to look. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah, and that, that could take a long time, but, you know, a long time might be several days. Eight hours a day, ten hours a day. Yeah, it doesn't seem, it doesn't take me as long as it wants to. <laughs> That's time flies, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I don't even notice. I mean, a day will come and go, and I'll think, oh my gosh, it's, it's almost four o'clock, it's getting time to leave, and, I wish I could you know, stay and finish something. Well, you know, but, one of the uh, architects we interviewed, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, Steve Schneemann at okay. the Farmington Bills, he said just about the same thing. You get into the zone and you just, you lose track of time. Right. You just, because you're enjoying what you're doing so much, it just... You get lost in yeah. it, and, it, and it's wonderful. I mean, uh, well, it's what I love about uh, watercolor painting or mm -hmm. you know, any, anything like that, that you can just get totally absorbed in it. You know, you might be having troubles at home, but if you come in here and get lost in your work, <laughs> you don't care you know, <laughs> until the work is over. And then, then you got to go home. Yeah. But you feel good anyway, so, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you mentioned this powder technique. Uh -huh. uh, the other scientific illustrator we talked to, Peter Carrington, he mentioned a technique similar to that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's universal. I didn't even ask you, you know, you kind of brought that up yourself. Yeah. Um, very beautiful work. And work it's going to be very nice to scan some of these in. Um, and right now, I guess maybe if we can swing, the, we'll swing the camera over and, and Bonnie can describe some of the fossils she actually has right here on her desk. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll try and get a little bit of computer work here as well. So uh, Bonnie, why don't we kind of just start walking over this way? 